All right. First of all, I would like to give a big thank you to Hanji Bhajarika and Nilankur Das here, thank along you. with me. And everyone who has joined. And uh, all of you who have joined this uh, event, the first podcast on a very special topic today called the role of microchips and semiconductor in Indian economy and our lives. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, we will have this, this, this conversation both in Assamese and English today. Okay. So it will be a very informal session. We'll talk very casually, but we are going to talk really good stuff. Very heavy topic, I know. So we have to make it a little bit lighter. Right, Lilankar? I guess when. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Uh, we will come with an introduction first. But before that, I'd, I'd like to give few overviews what we are going to talk so that you will get the context out of it. Okay. So, so if you, Jodi Ami is a Onuman Koroze Azir, Azir Adhuni Kotor, Dinot, Dharok, today's uh, current lifestyle, one, one very uh, important innovation that mankind have ever done. So definitely one thing will come to our mind and that is called microchip and semiconductor because it has revolutionized the way we think, the way we live and the way we help each other, right? And contribute to the society. So if you look around everywhere, you'll find the uses of microchip or semiconductor by some ways, unknowingly or knowingly. For example, if we consider this mobile phone, for example, so it is made up of microchips. Then if we consider the car we drive, travel, or, or the uh, like hospitals, the nuclear industry, aeroplane, everywhere, our lives, governed by microchips or semiconductors, right? So I think this is the high time we should understand how this semiconductor works and uh, what is the role it is playing our day-to-day -day life and how it is driving the economy of our country where we are living. Because this is the age where the microchip or semiconductor is driving the whole world, right? And uh, for that, as you know, like this microchip is starts from like nanometer to a different sizes. So if you consider the hair, the size of a hair is like one hair, mm -hmm. it is around 100,000 nanometer. Okay. 100,000 nanometer, one hair. And if you consider the transducer or the chip, microchip inside our phone, this is only seven nanometer. You wow. can consider the complexity of the design that it involves, the manufacturing mm -hmm. it involves. So with that, I'd like to start the conversation with two of our renowned guests, respected people, and we have studied together. I'm so blessed and I'm very uh, proud to be with them today. And uh, I would, like, I would like to introduce them first and understand more from them. And uh, here, along with me, we have Sanjeev Hazarika. Okay. Okay. And he studied together with our all of us. And we have learned a lot from him. And he stood, yeah, I don't want to miss this opportunity to express <laughs> my emotions about Sanjeev, like Sanjeev Amarkar Neki Epitome of our sense of achievement, I'll say. So, true, our true. student, I'm proud of you. True. So, this is where we are. And I would like to ask Sanjeev Hazarika to talk more about himself, his, about his journey, and as well as Nilankur, of course. Thank you, Nilankur, for being with us. And Nilankur is a basically columnist and uh, he's a TV host 
and he is there in Goa for quite some time. And he has a diversified knowledge in different culture, Indian culture, and he is a very good writer. And uh, thank you, Nilanko, for coming to this show. Hey, anytime, man. <laughs> so so let, good to be with us, you. <laughs> uh, let us uh, hear from Sanjeev itself among us. Please, Sanjeev. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> thank you for joining uh, you know, this uh, conversation. So, yeah, I think as Deva has given a very generous introduction. So thank you very much, Deva. Uh, uh, yes, I think after uh, I passed out uh, my uh, bachelor's in electronics, so I have been part of the semiconductor industry so uh, for almost like uh, 20 plus years now. <clears throat> and it has been a wonderful journey. Uh, more than that, this is a very humbling experience for me to learn about uh, you know this very intricate process of uh, you know design. And uh, uh, so I would say yes. So you know I have learned. Uh, it's very small part of the entire semiconductor design process. It's it's a huge process. So I'll just say that I have just learned a small part of it, and probably that's what we're going to discuss. You know, uh, 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 some of the topics. Uh, you know, uh, based on what we have learned so far. <clears throat> So uh, yeah, so I joined in 2000, uh, so early uh, 1999 in ST Microelectronics, so which is uh, which is one of the handful companies who are working on the semiconductor space in India at that point of time. So it was based in Noida. <clears throat> then uh, I moved to Bangalore in uh, 2000, and I joined a US-based company uh, in Alliance Semiconductors. So I spent about five and a half years there. So I'm mainly working on the semiconductor memories. Uh, so the memories are the uh, uh, the storage elements which are used for storing of data. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it is a very good experience. So, uh, we had a very wonderful, uh, you know, open uh, you know, uh, learning environment there. So, we learned a lot. Then, around 2005, I joined uh, ARM Embedded Systems, which is actually a UK based um, company working on uh, different aspects of uh, semiconductor design. And uh, I spent almost like uh, 12 to 13 years. So it was a very good experience uh, in different domains of semiconductor design. So it was a very good, uh, overall, it was a very rewarding experience of what I see. And um, so, yeah, so I think uh, around 2018, I decided to take a break. And uh, ever since uh, I've been working as a semiconductor services company and uh, mostly working on uh, you know, training and upskilling uh, some of the upcoming uh, semiconductor design professionals. So basically, we are just preparing the next generation of semiconductor uh, no, uh, design engineers. So that is what we do. Thank you. So if I remember <laughs> correctly, Honzibe Amar Bachelor, Mane, I think pioneer. He is he. So how Mane, so from what I think, I got a Mane. Our career, I mean, lot of struggle. Career, so that idea, yeah, take it start to start your career. Aru Prohomodes Alliance Semiconductor to Silane ST Micro ST Then say Alliance Semiconductor, then you came to ARM. Okay. So so this really a long journey you you have come up to here. And thank you, Sanjeev, for the brief introduction. So we'll hear more about his career and other things. So before that, I'd like to ask Milankur, please. Hey, talking about Sanjeev, man. <laughs> I remember once uh, I went to his home and he told me about the United World College. Huh? It was such a big, open, like exploring thing for me to learn about United World Colleges. I was like, to join the I did you know, like you need a lot of money also. So then uh, after, after, I, after I started working, I got a chance to be inside the United World College in Pune once. Then I was remembering him also. Okay, I could... Like the thing that I got to know from Sanjeev, I could easily like uh, get into it and all. Thank you for that. Aru, Sanjeev, of course. Aru, more kotha nai because I uh, I came to Symbiosis Pune. That was humanities porisu. Then graphic design korlo. I always wanted to be in this media section. I wanted to work in art and activism. So tenekar hone moi jibon to craft korisu. Etia moi. Now I'm working with a uh, publication called Herald Publication. Uh, this was started in like 1900. It was a Portuguese paper. Yeah. So 19, 1961, Goa, Tatiya, Pra, English, I write a column every fortnight. I do a TV show every week. 
learn it's like a mutual understanding or a, like right. a, like a cross pollination of ideas and knowledge no it it's right. very good bhal kaam kar sir definitely yeah they have taken a wonderful initiative so really yes thank you right. <laughs> thank you so it is all your support and uh, see if you are around it with <laughs> like minded people like you guys then definitely it's possible otherwise so uh, as we all know like post covid so there are like transcendental changes have come to our like our lifestyle right so every country started thinking differently how to innovate and how to like bring changes to their grow their economy in different ways so here there comes the idea of taking the semiconductor industry in a different dimension altogether the, the bio, geo, geopolitical influence and all right so india uh i don't want to mention the political leaders or whoever but i we know who are doing that so they have taken mm-hmm. the humongous effort and they are encouraging the global uh bureaucrats uh, bureaucrats or global people mane bahiror dekhor je bilak dhoro investor ase ba dangor scientist ase teno uthahito korise so their indian government is taking initiative i think around more than 10 billion Dollars. dollars there they have decided to give subsidy to encourage people to come to india do design do manufacturing right, right. so that is a big initiative and <laughs> recently also we have done so having said that there are a lot of developments happening in india but still there are long way to go okay so with that let's go a little deeper into that and understand how the things are happening because i am not the expert here sanjeev has been there in this journey throughout his career so we'd like to know more from hanjeev okay so uh, i would like to know hanjeev like uh, can you tell can you tell us ama koban ek mane what uh, made you to come to this area and can you tell us some story behind that some interesting facts like what made you like uh, very passionate about this what is like a junoon like huh? what uh, made you like uh, what do you call uh, nilankar uh, madness madness yeah yeah yes <laughs> yeah please i think uh, yeah i had a deep interest in uh, you know especially in electrical circuits and electronic circuits right from the very beginning <clears throat> maybe since my uh, school days i i remember uh, you know we used to actually go to uh, a small uh, electronics hobby club so there's a hobby club in uh, tejpur so we, had, we used to gather you know every saturday or sunday and you know design some small small circuits so i think that is where i developed my Uh, interest and uh, i just want to continue in a similar field so i think that is where the journey started. i think i still remember i i heard <clears throat> uh, one of our friend was gotam methi he is like a, he is also a genius like in electronic field yeah, as you yeah. most of you <clears throat> us know right yeah. and i think on the yeah i think both of us i remember you know we were just class 8 students and we had no idea what electronics is but we still used to go there and then you know interact with a lot of seniors uh, you know who used to were experts in doing uh, you know circuit design So we should just interact, and then we had a very interesting time there. So I think that is where we, you know, build some interest from that point of time. <clears throat> right. So, Hanji, to be covered, Yamak, can you tell us in a very layman language, like probably we can go a little deeper also. Yeah. So, uh, what is this microchip, and what is this semiconductor right, transducers? Right. How it works? Right. So semiconductor is based on a material, so which is a semiconductor material. So as the name says, uh, uh, you know, its conductivity uh, lies somewhere between a conductor and insulator. So we know what is a conductor. So all our copper wires, right? So whatever we're using for you know uh, transferring say electrical current, so these are good conductors. And then we have say woods, uh, which is a good insulator. So semiconductor is a type of material, so which is uh, where the conductivity lies somewhere in between, right? but the beauty of semiconductor is it using semiconductors so we uh, basically design a, a device called transistor 
and that is what is the foundation for building any kind of semiconductor chips right and uh, and technology has enabled us basically to pack millions and millions of transistors in a very small piece of silicon in fact it's billions not even millions is it called wafer or something uh, yeah it's a silicon wafer so ah. basically uh, we have a silicon so basically it can be printed on a uh, small piece of silicon so we can actually print billions and billions of transistors in a very small piece of silicon and the more the number of transistors we have in a small space right so more amount of computation power we can uh, we have right so and that is what we have been using in the, all the modern devices so all the tvs uh, fridges and regulators right so in fact uh, i have a small uh, this one here so as you can all you can see this is a motherboard from one of the tv uh, so basically you can actually see a lot of uh, uh, small rectangular or square parts here so these are basically the chips right so the semiconductor chips so inside the chips actually there are uh, you know, millions or billions of transistors that are sitting inside. Okay, and uh, and the beauty of it is, as Deva has mentioned, right? So it is the dimension of our transistors uh, that has enabled us to do tremendous amount of computation in today's uh, today's world. Right. So just to give an uh, just to give an idea, so uh, here we're talking about transistors in a dimension of nanometers, right? So we all know millimeters. So millimeter is probably this much of uh, will be a one millimeter. So we divide into thousand times, we get one micrometer, and that each micrometer divided to another thousand times, we get one nanometer. So you can imagine the amount of you know miniaturization that we are talking about when we are doing, and that is what brings the complexity of uh, you know uh, designing the semiconductor chips. So as I said at the beginning, like uh, it is the most complex thing that human uh, right. mankind has true. ever made. Right? Yes, that is very true. So it's a, it's a very complex process. And that's why very few countries or very few companies have been able to excel in uh, you know, this particular domain. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so if there is small bug, also small defect, there is no going back to right yeah, yeah. condition like. Correct, correct. So we have yeah. to do redo everything. Yeah, right, kind right. Of. yeah we'll discuss some of the topics yeah, so yeah, as, sure. as we progress. So basically, the entire, uh, you know, how the design process works. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it's like, let's say if you have one billion transistor in a small piece of silicon, so we need to ensure that each and every transistor works. So that's how we can get a working silicon part. So okay. if some of the parts do not work, so we have to throw the chip, and uh, that brings a lot of uh, you know uh, cost, right? So mm. uh, I mean, to keep the cost advantage, we need to ensure that we have maximum number of working parts when we actually man manufacture semiconductor chips. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. <clears throat> So uh, moving forward, probably Nilankur will have a few questions. Please go ahead. Yeah, like plenty of questions, you know, like Janaka Sanjibi Kuya say, Iman Khoru at a tight, Iman Kini communication ahi goise. Like what are the innovations, or what are the challenges, or maybe what are the skill sets you need to make a, a semiconductor like that, you know, like maybe studies or mindset. Right, right. So there are actually two things here. One thing is uh, there are two distinct domains here. So when it comes to semiconductor uh, chips, so one is <clears throat> the manufacturing aspect. Mm -hmm. right? So where the chips are getting manufactured. So okay. that's a different domain. So that, uh, And the other domain is the design. So the design of the semiconductor chips. So both require a, a kind of, uh, basically it's like essentially it's two verticals here. Right? Okay. And both require different kind of expertise. So we belong to the design community. So we are not okay. experts in manufacturing process, right? So, okay. Uh, so what India is trying to do is bring in the manufacturing process here. So for different uh, economic and uh, geopolitical reasons. So I think uh, we'll discuss that uh, as we move, move you know, uh, move ahead. So mainly the uh, yeah, it is the complexity of. Uh, packing so many transistors in very small piece, so that is the that's the uh, you know uh, the trick here, right? So, um, so very yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I I guess you know you need to have a very like a scientific approach, you know, very uh, like a like a critical thinking to do all these, you know, Absolutely. like and, yes. and where where does we stand? Where does India stand in this whole manufacturing or uh, design vertical? If, right, if you're talking right. about the verticals, very good, very good. Yeah. So actually, in terms of design space, I would say India is doing uh, phenomenally good. So tell uh, us some example, please. If I if I may, if you may. 
Right, right. So I think, uh, okay, so the thing is, uh, the semiconductor design industry in India started way back. So I think mm -hmm. it started somewhere around uh, uh, 1985. So I think when uh, Texas Instrument actually set up the first design center in Bangalore. Uh, so after that, there have been many companies. And now if you see pretty much all the global semiconductor design companies have their basis in India, either in uh, Bangalore or Hyderabad or in uh, Noida, right? So there we are doing very good. Mm -hmm. uh, but what we do not have in that space is a pure Indian uh, grown semiconductor company. So these are mostly the MNCs which have come from outside and set up their bases here. So, then, then why not? Sorry to interject. Why not? Okay. So yes, so we can uh, we can do that. So there are some progress here. So there are two bottlenecks here. So so when you do the semiconductor design, so it is a very capital intensive process. Okay. So let's say if you design a chip here, so you have to go all the way up to the manufacturing process, right? And mm -hmm. that needs a good amount of money. Uh, so I think that is where the government is now kind of trying to infuse some money here. So what they're saying is, if you have a design. And okay. we, are, we are ready to invest some part of, uh, you know, basically we're going to give you some subsidies so that you can go all the way up to the manufacturer. This, and, and this is the new government policy that has, that has come is, up? This is, this is as per the new government policy that has come up. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so basically what the government is doing is they are coming up with two policies. I mean, mm -hmm. they're parts of the same policy. So mm -hmm. one is uh, they're saying as a production link initiative. So where some companies ready to manufacture uh, semiconductor chips here. So True. they're going to give about uh, up to 50% of uh, the wow. cost, mm -hmm. right, the, the, uh, uh, as incentive, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And other is what they call as a design link initiative. So it's like mm -hmm. in, in Indian companies do a design in India and mm -hmm. then go for semiconductor manufacturing. So even mm -hmm. there also they're offering about 50% of uh, incentives. Okay. So that is a great thing to do. And, uh, and in fact, there are some work happening, so which is completely India-based. So, uh, uh, so there is, uh, in fact, IIT Chennai has designed one completely, uh, you know, uh, India uh, made uh, risk processor. So it is called okay. mm -hmm. and it has been already been tested uh, in different technologies, uh, including some of the advanced technologies nodes that we have. So that's a very good news. Yes. And mm -hmm. under, <clears throat> another uh, government organization is called uh, Center for uh, uh, Advanced Computing. So CDEC. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, CDEC actually is doing a phenomenally good work. So uh, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, it's its own semiconductor design. So it's a completely yeah. India-based design. So we're actually trying to build a semiconductor chip, which would actually go for a supercomputer applications and mm -hmm. it's completely done in India. The design will be completely done in India. Well, uh, I remember CDEC is the guys who started uh, supercomputers, no? Like, yes. yeah. Are, and uh, two observations, no? Like, to visit a question, 1985 bully, I think, our family did a portham to TV. I'm sure she put the hour as late TV. Right. And and secondly, it is like our Israel is like space shuttle pot has it, Rachandra and Mongolian. Our indigenous Jundu chip will I say, hey, Tenuga to use Korean to be Very okay, very good question. Very so good question. there is uh, so now coming to the manufacturing space, it is mm -hmm. not that uh, we are completely zero, so we have okay. done some work. So okay. there is a government uh, owned uh, company, it is called Semiconductor Complex Limited. Uh, it used to be called Semiconductor Complex Limited, so now it is called Semiconductor Laboratory. Uh, it is mm -hmm. based in Holly. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So mm. they do limited amount of uh, chip uh, you know, production. Okay. Basically, where the chips are manufactured, and mm. those are mainly used for you know uh, space and defense applications. Mm. So we have some limited footprint there, so it's not that completely zero. But we don't have uh, something at the production level which goes for mass production. So okay. Uh, so in fact, uh, uh, some of the chips that are being made in uh, SCL are actually going to be used in all this uh, Chandrayaan and uh, Mangalaya. So that is mm. actually. Good. Uh, uh, but the, but the, but the thing here is when you go for the space or defense, mm -hmm. uh, they're the nature of uh, you know the semiconductor chips that we need are slightly different uh, than what is actually required for a consumer application like say mobile phone and laptop. That will be different, yeah. Yes. So, okay. Before before I uh, give the chance to Devo to speak, ask no, you another please. question. No, yes. Very what, interesting uh, Yeah. No. Uh, another thing I want to ask you that to me, it's a question. Sanjeev, question. It's a it's a uh, some amount of money. What is that? Some amount of money that that <laughs> government has to come in. Yes. You know, like that right. nobody can do. We have so many rich people. 
Correct. You know, like what is it? Can you be right. can you be specific, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think uh, yeah. Uh, so the amount of money that is required to uh, start a semiconductor uh, form we call a semiconductor foundry. So where okay. we manufacture semiconductor chips runs into billions of dollars. So it will be a couple of billions of dollars. So typically it will be two to three billion dollar. So, <laughs> wow. so, so in uh, today's uh, time, it will be about say 20,000 20, crores or something like that, right? So, uh, and that will not, may, not, may not be in the very advanced technologies. So it will be in a little bit older technologies. And uh, so that's a cost that is involved. So unless there is some uh, push or incentives or government, so I think people are not ready to take uh, that much of big risk. So in fact, <clears throat> uh, if you see the history, uh, the semiconductor industry, where it is flourishing, right? For example, in China or Taiwan, in fact, is they have a lot of backing from the government. So in fact, TSMC was completely funded by government when they started. So TSMC is the largest manufacturing foundry in the world. Yeah, uh, Sanjeev. Yeah. Yeah, Pranjal this side. Uh, yeah. Hi, Sanjeev, Devjit and Ilankur. Yeah, you are hi, hosting hi, it. Please go very ahead. Very right. So I want to know, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I want to know about what uh, data is talking about uh, uh, designing of the ships in India. And uh, I have heard that they have taken some spaces in various parts of India for designing the ships. So is it true and how much actually they are emphasizing on? Uh, can you can you just repeat, Pranjal, a little bit? I think the data, data is uh, coming forward for designing the ships in India for the a manufacturing plant that is coming up by. Oh, you are talking about HP. Tata. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. By uh, suppose HP. HP is investing one billion dollars in a Chennai plant for manufacturing of their own uh, servers, storage, and all in India. From first of November, they have already uh, informed government of India because India had stopped uh, bringing the material from outside uh, India mm -hmm. for the laptops and uh, desktops, right? Right. So because uh, okay. it, they're emphasizing um, the manufacturers to uh, manufacture the products in India, right? So I, now I, it is... I, uh, I, I, okay, I, I got your point. So here we are talking about two different things, okay? Okay. So one is semiconductor chip manufacturing. So that is this individual parts, okay? So this is what is the policy that we're talking about. What you're talking about is assembly of uh, you know uh, a semiconductor uh, sorry uh, you know uh, 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 computer uh, sorry a computer for example right so assembly of electronic goods so in assembly of electronic goods we are already in good shape okay so india is actually already okay. doing okay. now my my point my point is that what tata is emphasizing on that they are going to have some manufacturing plan for the ships right correct, in india correct 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 so so there basically the government is Saying that you know we are we are going to provide about fifty percent of the cost that is required to set up a semiconductor manufacturing foundry. So even if Tata does it, or mm -hmm. say Tata does in collaboration with someone, right? So in Taiwan or in US, so government is ready to bear about fifty percent of the manufacturing cost. Uh, not the, the, the not the manufacturing cost per se. It is the cost to set up the foundry, which can run into a few billion dollars. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So that's the cost that we're talking about. So, uh, so yeah. I, I mean, as I mentioned, right? So even uh, all the foundries that we are talking about, so TSMC uh, in uh, 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 Taiwan or many of the Chinese foundries are actually completely backed by the government. So definitely we need some kind of uh, backing. Okay. And that's what the government has realized now. Thanks. And then that's why they have come up with a policy to you know uh, uh, right. help and support basically. So we'll discuss why the need came. So as yeah. I think as we uh, progress. All right. So this is a very genuine question. Thank you, uh, Pranjal, for asking that. Yeah. So to move ahead, I think I remember uh, Nilankur was asking uh, what the specifics about the investment, right? So as uh, San Sanjeev has rightly pointed out, it's in billion dollars. So definitely, mm -hmm. because uh, what happens is like I uh, what I hardly heard like the transducers are as. Uh, assembled in billions of transducers right. in one form, one small space. So my question as a layman or as a student to Sanjib is, so how is it possible, like practically right. to keep so many billions? Like if you call, call about, we, we can't think about like yeah. lakhs, right? Or crores or millions, billions that we can't imagine. So it's like unlimited, right? How is it possible to assemble in small space and uh, put in our day-to-day -day life? 
Right, right. So that, that is where the complications uh, lie. So basically, uh, so basically it is, uh, there's a very high precision printing process uh, onto the piece of silicon. So basically we'll have say magnified images, but they can be printed uh, to a very high uh, magnification process uh, in a very small space. So that's, that's the whole technique of manufacturing a process. And this called as a, uh, so as you, uh, I think many of you have heard the name, it's called very large scale integration. So uh, it is called as uh, uh, very VL, large scale VLSI, 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 right? So I think Mr. many of you have heard that called VLSI. So it's, it's called as very large scale integration process. And uh, in fact, the, 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 the process of integration of transistors started way back in uh, uh, 60s, 1950s and 60s. So that is where people learn the process of integrating many transistors in a small piece of silicon. So, um, and it was uh, invented uh, by uh, many, uh, many scientists who were working in the US. Uh, so uh, I think Intel was one of the uh, number uh, Pioneer. pioneers, uh, specifically in this field. So I think many of you heard the name uh, Gordon Moore. So he is considered the further figure uh, in the whole semiconductor space. And what he predicted is every two years or every one and a half year, we can actually double the number of transistors which are packed in the same space of silicon. And, uh, and his theory was almost right until uh, very recently. And that is what we have seen, the entire revolution of semiconductors and electronics, right? So mm -hmm. the revolution that we have seen over the last couple of decades is because of this process of uh, you know, uh, integration uh, you know, more and more compact integration. So like every two years, we are actually actually seeing a new technology process node, uh, which develops, which comes up. And, uh, and every, with that, we see more powerful chips and we see more powerful computation that's happening. And that is what is the revolution or the revolution that we have seen that, that, we, are, that we are observing now. And can you highlight <laughs> Ponzi, some of the areas like uh, uh, which are, highly impacted by the semiconductor, semiconductor industries. Okay, so I think there is uh, no aspect of life currently, which uh, semiconductor For doesn't touch us. Audience, yes. Right, so um, I think whether we take the televisions or uh, you know, mobile phone or laptop or fridge or washing machine, anything that we can think of, right? So everything, there is uh, some amount of electronics in that. And the basics of uh, you know uh, all those electronic part is the central link, the central control part is some kind of semiconductor chips is, is what we have. You know? So um, and on top of it, what's happening now is so earlier uh, you know we had uh, the semiconductor chips are not so powerful. So now because of the scaling, so uh, the scaling is the process of where we go on reducing the size of transistors over a period of time, right? So we have more and more computation power. And with that, we are seeing a lot of lot of software innovations, right? So we are having artificial intelligence that mm -hmm. are that we are able to build into the uh, uh, you know in, into the chips, right? So we are seeing more and more computation power, uh, which is being uh, delivered, you know. Somehow I lost the connection, it seems. Did you lose the connection? I don't know. I cannot hear anybody.
Can you hear us? Yes. Go ahead. Sorry, I think our network went down, so it got disconnected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what yeah. I was saying was uh, uh, recently it has come in paper, if, if you have seen the news. Uh, so today's Apple iPhone 14 is as powerful as the computer that was used to send moon to uh, you know, people to moon in 1969. Okay? Wow. So that's the kind of computing power we're talking about. <laughs> Seriously. I'm, not clapping Apple, I'm clapping the Intelligence of human Correct, mankind. Exactly. So that's, that's the intelligence of humans uh, you know, that we are talking about. So it is as powerful as the entire set of computer that was used to send you know, people to move in 1960s. Wow. What an advancement <laughs> huh? within these like uh, three, four decades, not like in 30, 40 years from where to where we have come up about. Yeah. And, and, and we are going to see much more uh, in a very short time. So I'm sure people are in the, in a wired magazine, people are putting chips in their body, man, which, you know, you don't have, you go in a shop, it's just your pin code and everything is there, you know. You just exactly. So to... now if you, if you go in, enter one shopping mall, you know, you just have to think, what do you want? Everything will be booked for you. Then you just come out of your, of can the we, shopping mall. Can and can we can we think about the money, money money part also? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That uh, yeah, that, I, yeah, I that that from the Tespur market. Hello, hi. Hi, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> you may see him. You may know him. <laughs> Ruba, Ruba. Hi, Ruba. Hi. Oh, Ruba. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Good to see Good you. to see you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Okay. Bore okay. Bore bore bore. Thank you for showing the interest. <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. So, yeah, it was pretty interesting what Sanjeev has said. The improvement happening. Just, yeah, we we'll uh, also talk about uh, what is coming next. Yeah. And that is just phenomenal what's going so, to happen next. Yeah. So far, we have <laughs> spoke about uh, the how the semiconductor is evolved and how where India's stand, right, basically. Right. And we'll talk a little bit more on that. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so I'm a bit curious to know, like, see, uh, uh, you in terms of global uh, semiconductor arena, like, where do we stand? India stand, right, right. So, okay, so there, as we as we mentioned, right. So there are two parts to it. So we are doing very good uh, in terms of electronic product assembly. So as you guys uh, know, right. So we actually manufacture a lot of. Uh, uh, we have started manufacturing iPhones, right. So we are manufacturing a lot of laptops. So in fact, government of India is actually saying, okay, don't import anything from outside. We'll have it everything in-house. So we are doing a very good uh, you know, work in terms of uh, an assembly of electronic products. So where we don't have a footprint is in, in, the, in, the, in the space of semiconductor you know, chips, right? And that is where uh, we are trying to uh, put our focus on. And, uh, and not only the Indian government, so I think government all across the world has suddenly realized the importance of chips that's you know it's going to play in our future and uh, so we are trying to kind of build a self uh, you know sustaining supply chain right so in the in, in the entire semiconductor uh, design space so that is what the goal is so whatever you are trying so even other countries also trying so in fact <clears throat> uh, this is a very golden opportunity for us uh, at this point of time to uh, you know start that process to to a bit simplify what sanjeev says uh, for for in layman term, probably supply chain, if we talk about supply chain is something like, uh, it is like starting from where the factory, where the, uh, where the products are manufactured, then it comes to the distributor and from distributor, how it comes to retailer and how it comes to the end user, the whole chain, it is called supply chain. So that supply chain whole process has to be owned autonomously by India right. so that a lot of cost can be that's what yeah. that's what uh, Sanjit meant right yeah yeah so that is where the focus is now yes please so in the in that context i believe that this uh, if semiconductor uh, whole uh, process the supply chain has to be developed we need to have a whole lot of engineers who will be working on that we need to have a like our education policies also needs to be streamlined into that direction i believe and Correct. and and I believe it's a if it is a huge industry, there will be uh, original equipment manufacturers for that, like how we have in vehicles, how we have in 
other stuff right so uh, i think it will help in employment generation also you know with a technical education uh, do you think that government is doing something on the, that regard in that regard absolutely so uh, i think it's, it's a very good question so uh, uh, so in terms of skill set mm -hmm. i would say that uh, we we have a very good skill set because uh, now we have a very very good pool of uh, engineering talents in india right what we like both of you is... are <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so i think so i think setting up a foundry is a very big uh, big task as you have discussed so it's a very complicated mm -hmm. task Mm -hmm. So definitely we have to look for partnership to start with. So that's why any foundry that we set up here in India, so it will be in a, usually it will be in a joint partnership with some of the you know, foundries which are, which are already existing. Let's say TSMC or UMC or some of the foundries which are there in Taiwan, right? So first we have to learn the skill. So definitely we cannot start everything from scratch. So I think that's not possible. No, no, got it, yeah. So there has to be someone who trains us we learn it. So basically what we call as a transfer of technology, right? So we have to, technology has to be transferred to us uh, through, uh, through a joint venture. So I think that's what- It is like, uh, it is like making KFC chicken, <laughs> like, right. so the IP, the concept is in US. Right. So somebody invented that. Yeah. So same knowledge has, has been transferred to India. Right. Now KFC is created in India and we are getting the similar test. In the same, same, this the same, uh, you know, the thing applied even for the design space. For example, when we started, uh, you know, there's very little design knowledge. So, but what happened is many of the, you know, uh, US based companies actually set up the design centers here. So they have already come, up, you know, uh, come, uh, come, come here trained. So they have trained us and then we have learned from them. Right. right? So the similar okay. concept has to be in a foundry space. And, 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 and Sanjeev, this process has started. People are uh, getting uh, collaborations with uh, foreign companies and all. This process has started already? The process the process of discussions and okay. uh, negotiations already started. Right. So far, no solid uh, you know, uh, decision, uh, decision has been made. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So okay. I think if you see the news recently, uh, there are many updates Micro. on what's happening. So different, different companies. In fact, if I see the uh, news every day, you know, some companies are trying to form a joint venture with some, uh, you know, True. some manufacturer. Okay, that, okay. The discussions are all in there. That's a very okay. good thing to see. A lot of active discussions. And we are sure that something solid should happen soon. Cool. Okay. Considering the, the population of India, right? So we have uh, now, uh, how much? 1.4 billion. 1.4 billion population. Right. Yeah. Highest in the world. And if you consider Taiwan, Taiwan is a fraction of that, Small, yeah. right? Yeah. But uh, Taiwan is the number the one. best or number one semiconductor manufacturing. manufacturing country in the world. Not even Russia, not even China, not even US. Uh, US okay. So I want to. Uh, I am very curious to know from Hanjeev, like being such a small country, what is the speciality of the people right. residing over there in terms of the mindset? that India doesn't, India has a lot of talent pool, okay, but something is missing because of which there's a big gap, the right. supply chain is missing, the something, people are reluctant to invest, the, we are much lagging behind, we are at the very early stage. So, so probably Hanjip can <laughs> tell yeah, a little excellent bit more. Question. So I think if you have seen the comments, so recently there was a <clears throat> semiconductor, um, 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 I mean, there's a, a meeting or whatever, so what do you call this? Um, uh, organized by the central government, right? right? So where they invited a lot of investors and a lot of discussions took place. And there, one of the comments from uh, Foxconn, Foxconn CEO. so uh, Young Liu. CEO, Young Liu, he says yeah. that it is it is a job for the brave. And that statement is absolutely true. So it needs a lot of courage, a lot of determination, relentless work to make something successful in the semiconductor space. And and that is what is probably there, uh, especially the people from Southeast Asia. So I have personally worked with them. Uh, so while I was working in, uh, uh, especially in the ARM, so I got opportunity to work in work along with a lot of uh, these semiconductor manufacturing houses. So I was working in Silicon Valley. So and I have seen the attitude of people, right? So how they are different than us, and that, that, that there's definitely a very significant difference. So they are real fighters. Okay, so you need to be, uh, you know, very dedicated, very selfless to be really successful in this in this space. So 
I think we are there. So I think we have just started a journey. So I think we need to just catch this opportunity now and then move ahead. So um, that is what uh, we need to do. So in fact, <clears throat> that fighting attitude, right? Or that the dedication and the sincerity that is there. Uh, and that's the reason why this region is successful. That's Southeast Asia. So almost 90% of chip, chip manufacturing actually happens here. So either in China or in Taiwan or Malaysia, <clears throat> right? So uh, there, the dedication level of people is really, really high, okay? And, and that's what uh, makes a huge difference. And uh, we can do it, but yes, so we need to uh, you know, uh, put our best effort for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a very good answer. Thanks, Sanjeev. So Nilankar, uh, would you uh, like to ask anything before we... <laughs> It's a whole so new funny. world, man. It's like a, it's a whole new world in the sense that uh, there's so many scientific advancements is happening every day. Or when you say that Taiwan or Manu or you know, you have to be brave enough to do it. But I think uh, because considering the population problems of India, or uh, the kind of uh, educational policy we have, I think we have got a long way to go to do all this. Huh? I think we need a, a very good leadership kind of a scenario. One good leader to who we can like look up to till now we do not have a leader in that uh, sector right i think if we absolutely, if absolutely. if if there is some leaders we can look up to i think we can grow towards that you know that is what i think uh, i think uh, <clears throat> leadership from a technical point of view should not be a problem okay so <clears throat> we have what we have seen is we have people who have companies who are ready to invest but mm -hmm. what requires is some kind of support from the government because of two reasons mm -hmm. <clears throat> one is uh, uh, this industry is typically uh, consumes a lot of, uh, it, it requires a lot of land, it requires a lot of power, it requires a lot right. of water for it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But for mm -hmm. that, you know, from that perspective, it definitely requires a lot of support from the government. So it, it has true, to have, uh, mm -hmm. so that is what is required. So there are people are ready to invest, but what okay. they are looking for is some kind of support system. And as I mm -hmm. mentioned, right, so even the semiconductor industry, industry in the Taiwan or China, it has grown up, grown only with the help of the government. And that is what we need. True. And that's yeah. what is missing so far. That is what is missing so far. Yeah. And the government has realized that this is very important. And then um, and then we are just taking some step. Yeah, in fact, I, the whole I, process started, uh, the entire process started after, during the time of Corona. So we started to realize how important it, the role it plays in the overall you know, our economy, right? So just to give an example here, so for example, if you see the bikes of today, right? So all the mm. bikes are there, the display, right? So you get a yeah. speedometer, GPS, and all the yeah. display that yeah. is there. Mm. Mm. So the cost of that chip is a very small quantity. It may be just one or two dollars, right? Okay. But since the supply of those chips were not there, so the entire production chains were kind of stopped. Oh, okay. Got it, so, got it. Okay. Right. So, so both mm. because of that, you take months and months to order the vehicle. Correct. Right? Right. There's a, there's a huge waiting period right. because we did not have the small part and we can actually easily do it if we have that plant. Right? I think it's badly impacted last year in the automotive industry, automotive. not only bike, right. no, I mean, all the cars. Are yeah, yeah. So the entire automobile industry, which yes, is actually yes. one of the backbone of our uh, mm -hmm. economy is completely dependent on the semiconductor supply, the semiconductor chips. So unless we have it, so even that industry is kind of broken. So that is where this focus has come now to build a self-sustaining. Yeah, one of my friends actually, he is a CEO of automo uh, automobile uh, company. He's a, the company name is Automobile. He's very successful. So uh, he's like a service, all the different, uh, what do you call, um, uh, mod service models are impacted because right. of this problem yeah, yeah. last year. So and all our, uh, I mean, in the car, if you see all the GPS systems, all the entertainment systems, uh, even a lot of uh, you know mechanical parts are actually controlled by electronic items. So True. and those are not very expensive or you know very uh, complicated parts. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we don't have it, so even the automobile industry will completely come to a halt. And that is what has happened during the corona time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a, a right. progressive political will will help definitely. Political yeah. will is absolutely essential. So yes, without yes. political will, <clears throat> yes. without that uh, support, right? So the private Got companies it. are not. Invest mm. because mm. it's a huge amount of money they are putting mm. at stake. You know? True. Mm. Um, yeah, right. that is what it Again, is. The, coming to the grassroots level, like if we want to prove that uh, India is a superpower, India has. A
the potential. India can do something and prove to the world. Yeah. Definitely, India has to make some difference. And that is all the mindset that Sanjeev has rightly Absolutely. pointed out. Absolutely. Every human individual, like citizen of India, has to think differently. Yes. Yes. With yeah. The mindset. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. I think uh, if we have to go to a developed uh, nation tag, we cannot just do it without building semiconductors. So it's just not possible. So uh, because okay. the amount of dependency that you're going to have yes. in, the, you know, in the next uh, upcoming decades, right? So it just the dependency is just going to go and go, grow more and more. Whether you take any industries, whether it is automobile uh, or uh, you know uh, electronic industry or Health. uh, healthcare, right? Telecommunications, uh, even defense and aerospace. Um, even uh, even even if, if, even this Zoom communication that we are having. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I mean, if we have to go to a developed country, uh, you know, the tag, right? You have to get it. So it is not. Just not possible <clears throat> unless we could focus on this. this thing. So with that, we are almost towards the end of the conversation. So uh, probably we'll have one or two questions. Then we'll come to the Q and A part for a few minutes. If anybody has any questions, right? So I'd like to ask Hanzeev. So uh, uh, what uh, what is your opinion about the future uh, landscape or future? future op opportunities we have in front of India, we have covered some of them, but right. as, as a student, like what they're looking at the new generations, how they can explore more on this uh, area and how can they approve themselves? So what is the scope in terms of career? And, uh, yeah, yeah. so there, there, is, <clears throat> uh, there is tremendous amount of scope uh, uh, in terms of uh, career options here. Um, so going forward, this industry is only going to grow so we have uh, definitely a very good opportunity here. So in terms of uh, uh, you know the number of jobs that this industry is going to create. So um, so the future is looking definitely bright. And the um, only thing is yeah. So we have to start somewhere. So uh, we are starting a little late. I would say that we are starting almost like twenty years behind. We should have started this in early uh, you know two thousand. So but better late than never. So the future is, uh, we still have uh, you know, a lot of uh, things to be done in future. So definitely a lot of scope for students, uh, community, for the research community, right? To um, uh, invest time. And, and what uh, are the science stream or engineering stream they have to uh, pursue to continue okay. designing? So uh, typically <clears throat> for, uh, for starting a career in this domain, um, if you are uh, electric, if you have done engineering in electrical engineering or uh, electronics engineering, that should be good. So there is a typical, uh, I mean, there is a specific branch in electronics. It is called as microelectronics. So which are typically taught during the postgraduate level. So that is a more advanced course, so which, is, uh, which will definitely help you to directly get into the industry. So, um, uh, so that's how it stands. So I think we have a very good uh, education infrastructure in India at this point, so in terms of policy. So I think if these industries are created, it is going to create a lot of job opportunities. So, for India, definitely it holds tremendous amount of potentials. And we are actually going to create a lot of skilled workers. So I think that is what the key thing is. Thank you, Fanji. Yeah. All right. So I think we, we are towards the end of the conversation. And uh, Nilankar, do you want to add anything before we end this conversation and go to the audience? If, you, if they have any questions, anything? Uh, not much questions because you like you have guys have covered everything. Uh, what I gathered that to have this scientific uh, thinking process of the governance and which is coming up now. I think things are opening up and we are looking forward to yes. like, like, like how, how we are saying that India is going to be the uh, global uh, leader in like economy, you know, now we are in third position or fifth position, whatever that is. Like uh, to reach there, we need to have a this scientific mindset and I believe the gap between uh, employment and uh, education policy and everything, I, say, I think it's a multi-layered uh, situation, you know, it's just not right. like we cannot just put blinders in our eyes and see it in one way. I think it's like a multi-layered situation. We can right. look yes. into the <clears throat> educational policy to technical education, to the skill set, to the mindset that you have been telling about the Taiwanese, you know, also, uh, in we like we cannot just generalize between Taiwan and India because the Taiwan is like tiny and India is like massive, you know. Like massive. we are so big yeah. that like artists still think money. I think it's like a multi-layered question. And of course, the political will and the 
I think that scientific community, if they come forward and work towards with the government, I think it's a very win-win situation for all of us. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the will for the government. So, as I as I'm saying, right, the technical capacity we have it. So we have the yeah. capability. So okay. that willpower and some kind of uh, good environment is required, and yes. people are ready to invest. So we need to just get started. So that's where the key good. thing is. Yeah. So, so far, somehow it's just not starting. So we need mm. to start somewhere, and mm. then uh, things will fall in place. So that's well, some somewhere I have read one uh, philosopher who said the first step is the toughest. You know, I think we're just yes. taking the first step. True, True. exactly. Yeah. So we yeah. have not yeah. taken the first step yet. So the first right. step is, uh, is good, yeah. right. So yeah. thank you, Sanjeev. It is yeah, opened up you. our minds. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's open the uh, for the questions for, for the audience, like Q and A section. So if anybody uh, in, from our audience, any anybody has any questions or want to comment anything, please feel free to do that. I could see Biman, Daisy, Dr. Manoj, Sushanta. Swami, Dira, for last money. Thank you for joining. Thank and please uh, feel free to ask any questions. We'll have, yeah. probably you can spend uh, a few And minutes. also, uh, if, you are, uh, if you have any questions, so you can just message uh, me or Deva. So if you have individually, if you have questions, we'll be like, you know, uh, yeah. happy to uh, help you out. Uh, Definitely. Uh, yeah, so. Not only in this platform, probably this will be recorded version. So in future, it will be available in YouTube, Facebook, in all different platforms. So if anybody in future, if you see this video, please feel free to reach out to Hanjeev and uh, we'll do the needful for you. But at this moment, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And uh, let's make this opportunity more interactive like <clears throat> yeah, this moment. All right. Or it can be Hello. any language. Yeah. Hello. Very good. Afternoon to all of you. Actually, right. I'm very sorry. I have to go to the market. Yeah. Can you? Important. No problem. Can no you? Problem. Can you come to video, uh, Dr. Manoj? It's okay. No problem. Just, just say. <laughs> if you would like to. <sighs> if you're comfortable, otherwise is fine. No problem. <laughs> yes. 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 Actually, I missed the first part of the webinar, but uh, I think that it's very good. Uh, also, so, uh, I request Sanjeev Bhajarika, if you provide the recording first and then I share this among our students. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. may I got it? Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we are yes. going to do that. Yeah, we are going to do that. So, okay, okay. It, will be available, uh, it will be available in the YouTube channel that uh, we are going to use this as a platform ongoing yeah. uh, platform for this podcast. Definitely, we'll uh, do that, Dr. Manoj. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for attending. All right, so anybody else any, have any questions? Hey, can you hear me? This is Sushanta. Uh, hi, Sushanta, hi. Uh, we can hear you, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I actually missed the first part of the discussion uh, because I joined late. Sorry for that. So okay. the one question is, uh, basically, you are talking about the job opportunities for the engineers uh, only. And that's uh, the uh, um, answer I heard. So um, how it will help in the economy of India if a few percentage, suppose if you are talking about the foundry and if you get uh, the engineers only getting the job, but uh, what will, why government will be interested, the socialist government will be interested to basically invest in a, such a huge amount for a few jobs. So what is the ratio of the investment and what will be the job creation? So, okay, okay, I think uh, a job is just a small part of it. Okay, So <clears throat> it is not about jobs. It's not about job creation. It is about being uh, independent in the whole electronic supply chain. So that is what uh, is the focus for the government, right? So now it is like, as we have discussed, so each and every industry is interdependent, uh, dependent on electronic supply chain. So unless we have the chips in place, right? So I mean, for example, the automobile industry is completely is coming to a stop, right? So that's not a good thing to happen. So it is, I think the discussion is not about jobs. The job is just, you know, it is one of the byproduct, uh, of, byproduct of this. So that is not, the, not, that's not a goal. So the goal is to build a independent supply chain uh, which can support different different industries 
and uh, if we are india has to go to the next step right so this is going to be the backbone right for uh, for you know for the economic growth of the country so it is not about job creation so it is uh, it is it is about building a self sustaining supply chain for all the different industries that we have and who uh, uh, i just heard one more thing like is it specific like the job opportunity or whatever the scope for designing is it is uh, only pertaining to only engineers or no 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 okay sorry yeah, i think sometimes i mean this is too big a discussion you know to be completed in a small part so i mean if a foundry comes so there will be you know uh, it, it is a multidisciplinary field okay it is not just about engineering so it is a very good resource field for all people from all different uh, you know spaces of science so we have you need physicists you need mathematics mathematician we need uh, good uh, people from good uh, you know chemical background so we need people from all different backgrounds so it is not just about engineering yeah? so, so yeah and, a, yeah sanjeev has rightly rightly pointed out and uh, thank you for asking that question actually it's very valid question yeah, yeah. they were the problem is that all these foundries right most of the thing will be done by the robots the machines it cannot right, be done right. by the human and what sanjeev uh, is right to point it out so basically uh, the, chemi the chemical engineering or chemical background the research background which is suppose you are going to go to the 7 nanometer or 3 nanometer in that trajectory so that that time uh, more research oriented uh, work will be uh, done and that can be done by the uh, basically the other other stream of the other people uh, yes other people uh, compared to the engineering yeah. background correct correct so we are so not basically the about, yeah, yeah we are not talking, talking about, about engineering the background we are not talking about electronic and microelectronic guy exactly, so exactly design exactly. the things and all those stuff so exactly. my point Very is this, uh, yeah my point is another question to uh, supplementary question to sanjeev so suppose mm -hmm. foundry comes and then uh, uh, how we can get uh, uh, the design houses up in India? I'm talking about the, the RTL synthesis and place and route and uh, then the physical verification or basically from the spark to the ZDS. So to deliver that, so, how the ecosystem right. we can build up. So, okay. So as far as the design is concerned, we have the complete ecosystem already in India. So only thing is currently we don't have homegrown companies, right? So these are all the MNCs that we have. So we have the complete know-how of how to design a chip from start to the end. So right from ITL to the GDS2. So we're already doing it, right? So there's no problem with that. But what will happen is as this industry comes, it is going to support many other industries. So that is what the focus of the government is, right? As far as the design is concerned, we are already doing a good job. The next step for design is we need to have, probably we are going to see our own, uh, you know, uh, India-based uh, Apple or a Google, which you don't have, right? So these are all MNCs which are based in the US or other companies, other countries. So it creates a, so it is like everything is linked. So if you see China today, they have a complete, you know, end-to-end -end solution, right? So so let, let, let's take the foundry comes, so it builds a good supply chain, right? So it also kind of augments the other industries, right? So everything is linked currently, right? So that's why it is going to have a tremendous amount of Job uh, 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 tremendous well. impact on the Impacts. overall <clears throat> economy of the country. So that is how it is going to be. Rightly so, yeah. Basically, I was, you, I was, yeah. Oh, please go ahead, Mr. Sushanda. Hey, my Sushanda. Deba, my Sushanda. Oh, Susanna. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, no problem. Yeah, yeah, that is what I was looking for. So, uh, as you said, Sanjeev, that uh, yes, all the MNCs are investing in India, and basically we are doing service for those MNCs, the engineers, and whatever mm -hmm. we are doing here. So, my uh, that supplementary question was related to that: how we can uh, build a design house which, which can support the. Um, uh, support the foundry because you know what when you have a new foundry then to particular node you need to have particular ips otherwise uh, suppose you, you you need a uh, usb ip or you need a uh, uh, you need a um, ethernet or or in the sardes so those needs to be basically proven in that particular node or that particular foundry Otherwise, yeah. uh, nobody will come. Nobody will come because if that foundry is not proven, that designs are not proven at a particular node, then nobody right. will come and nobody will give you a chip. So my point right. is that how government can invest not only in the foundries, but also some kind of design house so that in design house, there'll be more employment. Rest assured. Very, very, so, very, very good question. Very, very excellent question. So in fact, uh, we uh, did have a small discussion on, the, uh, uh, on this point. 
So government is actually giving us uh, two incentives. Okay. So just like they're giving a production link incentives for production uh, in the production cycle. So they are also giving incentives to uh, you know to to have our own indigenous designs. So, yeah, yeah. So it is called design link in, in, incentives called DLI. So both these two options are available. So if there is any company who wants to start a design work in India, so government is actually ready to fund a good part of it. So depending on how complex the job is. So uh, so there are two there are two schemes to it. So that we we also depend you know we also develop a lot of independence in the design, right? So uh, so there are there are two aspects to it. And the other part is when you have the foundry, so this is not only going to cater only to India. So that's that's not the way to work, right? So uh, any foundry that you take, it has to take the IP development from all across the world. So otherwise, it cannot sustain just on a demand from a, from a purely from Indian market, right? So it will be definitely a global foundry which is catering to all over the world, and India will be uh, you know part of the whole uh, whole uh, whole space. Yeah, and thank which you. segment? Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, so, which segment, as you pointed out, PLI and the uh, DLI, right? Yeah, yeah PLI yeah. will have more autonomy. Uh, uh, that it will include both design and manufacturing, as uh, there is DLI only design. Is uh, DLI is mainly for design. Right. So, if I have to design a microprocessor, for example, right? Yeah. So, if I have to design it, I have to go all the way up to production, right? So, that's a big amount of cost that is involved. So government is saying yes, we are going to bear part of this cost right. because uh, in, in terms of semiconductor, if you have to do design, you only also have to prove it in silicon. So that's a significant amount of cost. So uh, uh, unlike in software, which can be tested uh, uh, with a very low cost thing. Mm -hmm. So government is actually giving a DLI. So uh, where the fifty percent of design cost will be covered for any uh, companies who are doing the design work indigenously in India. So in fact, uh, as I mentioned, right? So we already CDAC is working on that. Of course, CDAC is a purely a government entity, uh, but if any private companies come up with a design, so definitely they are going to uh, give a subsidy for that. So that's a that's a very good in incentive for the government side. Yes, thank you, Sushanta, for asking. Uh, by the way, uh, Sushanta, <clears throat> uh, thank you for asking that question and thank you. For yeah, joining. I missed the first part. I'm sorry for that. Probably Sanjeev has. No problem. Uh, no problem. Yeah, yeah, if, you have, if you have questions, questions yeah, yeah, please do ask. So we don't mind so, uh, repeating. So yeah. I think it will be good. Actually, for everyone, uh, so Sush Sushanta Sharma, the is he is a owner of a company, right. semiconductor based company owner okay. in Bangalore. Yeah. yeah so yeah. so please do so, ask uh, in case. Thank you uh, for asking questions. that question. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, uh, Sushanta. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, Sanjeev, yeah, I think we have already covered that which I missed, but uh, the, the answers you have given, I understand that. So, yeah, basically, that is that is a point. Uh, the design houses, we need to also uh, give emphasis on design houses for different IPs. <laughs> We still basically yes, yes, help yes. in the uh, yeah that's uh, so that the complete ecosystem you are right uh, globally it will be uh, done but still India has lot of resources in the design uh, that kind of design I'm I'm talking yes, about the yes. RPM design verification and the uh, physical verification or layout so those if you can somebody can basically put some uh, thought and put some funds there and also that those these companies can grow up um, uh, in India. So right now we are doing yes. servicing for other people. So that can be done in yes. India. Also. So in That's fact, uh, if you if you see the uh, uh, you know uh, information from this about the Shakti processor which uh, 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 IIT has developed, so it is actually an open source uh, uh, processor which is based on RISC uh, five architecture. So in fact, they are giving the complete uh, the source code for developing the you know, the processor. If, if some design house is ready to take it up and then take it to the next level, they can do it. So, uh, so that's a very good opportunity. Oh, yeah. Right. All right. Great. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> great interaction we had. Uh, anybody has any question before we end this conversation for today? Other thing also we need to probably see is the the amount of volume that you are talking about. So currently. I think if we talk about only the electronic industry, so it is about, I think the Indian market is about $100 billion. Okay, okay. so the amount of consumption that happens and out of the semiconductor consumption that happens about 25 to $30 billion. Mm -hmm. And as per the projection for government, so it is going to grow under five to six years, almost three to four times of that. So, uh, so if we have a good amount of chips, uh, uh, you know, some of them are at least designed in India, mm -hmm. so definitely it's a very good uh, opportunity. Uh, opportunity for all of us.
Yeah, Sanjeev, uh, right. well, in case, uh, Sanjeev, in case you are in Bangalore, uh, we can meet up probably next week if you are there. Yeah, sure. so, yeah. yeah we can yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll talk to you on that. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Definitely, definitely, definitely Sanjeev. Yeah, yeah, we can uh, definitely meet and more discussions. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much, everyone, for your wonderful support and uh, and spending uh, Sundays this time instead of spending time with your family members, you're sacrificing and you're joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thanks Thank for you. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.